I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio station KE0OG, here with Ask Dave number 73. And I want to talk about balance. I've had lots of questions from lots of people. What's a balance? What good is it? Do I need one? What brand? Uh, do I need current or do I need voltage? Is there something going on with common mode versus differential mode? And all these fancy terms like that. Well, as it turns out, there's some fair fairly simple underlying ideas and I just want to go through them. Uh, many, many years ago in the uh, mid-1970s I was in the Air Force and I went down to operate a special event station for the Boy Scouts. I think it was K5BSA and the activity took place uh, rather late at night and we were late getting set up. So uh, this guy said I had to use this ballon thingy. So we connected the ballon up, put up the 80 meter dipole and it was terrible. We couldn't get it to tune, we couldn't get it to do anything. Finally I snuck up there, took the ballon out connected it the usual way, and lo and behold, it worked. We had a great event. Uh, uh, I got to work lots and lots of stations. It was uh, uh, a very uh, good, uh, good event. Let me show you what balanced is, okay? I'm going to show this graphic that's here, and you can look at it too. And this is called um, balanced versus unbalanced. So let's look up here at the top, the ladder line. Uh, ladder line is two wires that are separated by some sort of like little plastic sticks or even wooden sticks or something. Sometimes this whole thing is encapsulated in plastic and they cut out sections in here to kind of lower the weight. And you'll note that in a balanced system, the current goes back and forth for AC, okay? So this is real slow AC, and it does exactly the opposite thing down here in the bottom. This is called a balanced system. When one line is going one way, the other is going the other. Now, in uh, coax, which is something that we use a lot in amateur radio, there's an outer shield, and in theory, this is at ground level, okay? And there's a center conductor, and in the center conductor, all the going back and forth is being done just by the center conductor. I, I should really have that arrow going twice as far because it's doing twice the work here. Okay, this is unbalanced. It means working against ground or some other reference point. Okay, the outer shell... Uh, the outside of the shell doesn't do anything. All of the energy is kept inside the shell. So, balanced, unbalanced. Now, one more thing about these as transmission lines. Um, coax is great as a transmission line as long as it truly does have a grounded shield all the way. It will keep all of the energy inside the coax. In ladder line, which is the balanced case, this is a transmission line, and if these two currents are balanced, it will not radiate. Okay, now you're going to get a little bit of a field out here, but by and large, the field is in the middle, the electric and magnetic fields are in the middle, okay, and energy moves in one direction and doesn't radiate. If this becomes unbalanced, it will radiate. If this right here, if this end is uh, grounded but this end is not or is connected to something balanced, you'll start getting energy on the outside of the shield. That's not good either. Okay? So, uh, the question would be, why does it matter? Um, I've used balance before. I usually build dipoles without them. Um, there's no hard and fast rule that you have to use. There's uh, ratios and balance. Uh, we'll talk about that. Okay, um, why it matters? Well, uh, transmitter outputs these days are almost always unbalanced. That means one side is ground and the other side is a wire that's doing all the work. Okay, uh, now balanced feed lines, however, have inherently less loss than coax cable does. So if you've got a long run out to your antenna, it might be worth sending it out there balanced 
uh, and then if it's a dipole, you can just feed it right directly into the dipole. If it's a vertical, now you've got to go from balanced to uh, unbalanced. Verticals are unbalanced, dipoles are balanced. We'll take a look at that, okay? Now, um, we need to hook balanced to unbalanced and unbalanced to balanced uh, in order to keep things in their proper place. For example, if I've got my antenna here, my FTDX3000 right there has an unbalanced 50 ohm output. Now if I want to send that energy a long way, say 200 feet out to um, a vertical on the ground, I would need first to convert it to a balanced feed line here, so I'd need an unbalanced to balanced, and then out at the antenna I would need to convert the balanced to unbalanced in order to feed the antenna. Balanced, unbalanced, ballon. That's where the term ballon uh, comes together. Uh, one of, some antennas are inherently balanced. If you look at them and they're symmetric, they're inherently balanced. If there's something not symmetric about it, it's not uh, balanced. If you have a Yagi with a Delta Match, it's going to be uh, symmetric. You'll need either to feed it with balance line or have a balance. Uh, if you have a Yagi that's like got a little Gamma Match on it, uh, that happens to be inherently unbalanced to balanced. So uh, that little feed point matching device right there will take care of it. You don't need a separate ballot. Alrighty, uh, what I'm going to do is show just a few charts on balance and uh, see if we can't learn a little bit more about that. So let me turn to the computer. The idea is to convert something that's unbalanced. For example, all the voltage is on the one line and the other line is held at ground to a point where you've got these opposites going like that. And the easiest way to do it is to use a simple transformer. A uh, one-to-one -one turns ratio. This is the unbalanced side and is grounded. This is the balanced side. Now the balanced side may or may not have a ground out of the center tap. If it does, then what we have is that A and B will be opposite each other and the two voltages will be relatively opposite to each other. We can do that with a transformer and get one to one. Now if the voltage stays the same, the total voltage is actually me er, measured from the top all the way down to here which is the same as this total voltage right here. Okay, Now, um, so the voltage is not changed. If the voltage is not changed, the current is not changed and it's one to one. You can in theory put any impedance in here and get that same impedance out here uh, in amateur practice usually the unbalanced impedance is 50 ohms so in this case of the simple matching transformer you'll get 50 ohms out of this side okay now here's a simple one to four transformer balance we see that ratio a lot I don't really know why, because very little in amateur radio is done at 200 ohms. So the unbalanced side, let's say we have 50 volts, 1 amp. The impedance is the ratio of the voltage to the current. Okay. Now we have twice, watch this carefully here, twice the turns here. These little dots simply indicate polarity. Uh, so this positive, this is positive up here and vice versa. They go together. It's going to be a hundred volts right here, okay? And to keep the same amount of uh, uh, power, this will be a half amp here. So 100 to a half is 200. This is 200 ohms over here. So the impedance goes up by a factor of four, whereas the voltage only goes up by a factor of two. So you see voltage up by a factor of two, current down by a factor of two. The ratio between those changes to 200 ohms. Now you see these 1.4 balance a lot, okay? Um, I don't know why particularly, but they are very common. Again, you can ground this. It's often not done. All right, let's look at the next type. Now, there's two kinds of uh, balance voltage and current. Uh, the difference is in the uh, voltage case, uh, the voltage on this side right at this point is uh, the equal and opposite to the voltage right there. 
okay it forces the voltage to be the same so if you come into an auto transformer this is a single um, toroid it's wound halfway and tapped right there okay and that goes off the ground um, here you've got the line coming in right on this side okay of the toroid and you've got a toroid going through here all the way okay if you add some extra windings on it the voltage down here will be higher than the voltage here okay that's an auto transformer it's done with a single winding so you energize part of the windings and that causes the magnetic flux to flow through the rest of the windings getting you a voltage over here again a one to two turns ratio so a one to two voltage ratio a two to one amp ratio which gives you a four to one ballon now this kind of ballon is uh, very very common this is a typical voltage ballon this has the same schematic as on the last diagram we see the input down over here okay this is a huge toroid in here and this is uh, connected down very sturdily uh, in a, a waterproof uh, box now the other kind of uh, ballon the current ballon make sure that the current going through a and the current going through b are the same uh, the voltages can vary a little bit okay so this may be a shorter wire than this one but it will make sure that the current is stay the same and if you want that for your antenna that's fine I want to mention a classic paper that was written on the subject of balance uh, this one right here by uh, Roy Lewallen W7EL at the time he lived in Beaverton Oregon this paper has been around with us for quite a while it was the seminal paper on balance uh, where he did some experiments to figure out what exactly worked and that drawing he has on the back is what uh, MFJ used for their current ballon okay this is available on the ARRL website if you go looking for balance uh, there it is okay this is from the classic paper balance what they do and how they do it by Roy Lewallen W7EL and he has in there uh, what he calls a superior 4 to 1 current balance 50 ohms unbalanced here 200 ohms balanced here note that there are two little transformers in here okay and they've got uh, these guys share a core and these guys share a core and you have to be very picky about the winding uh, to get that this next chart shows an example of exactly that this is a little MFJ 4 to 1 current ballon and uh, works very well I've also used this ballon it won't handle 1500 watts but it's designed to handle uh, well over a hundred watts and you can see the cross connection between the two sides right up in here we're going to do some experiments with balance uh, this right here is my antenna analyzer okay and I've got two balance here this is a four to one voltage balance uh, from Ballon designs handle up to five kilowatts this thing is sturdy as an ox and then I have this one from MFJ which is uh, much smaller it's more designed for about a hundred watts okay this is a current balance this is a voltage balance now I have here a resistor that is approximately 50 ohms let's check that out uh, right here and just hold it like that and what do we see down there we see 47.3 ohms okay so that's pretty close to the 50 ohms we've got here let's try this by just connecting the uh, resistor across like this and lo and behold uh, we get one to one SWR here at uh, 1.1 to 1 and this is at 13 megahertz let's just change the frequency down here to 1.8 megahertz we also get 1.1 is picking up a little bit of uh, uh, not quite 50 ohms which is why okay so now I'm going to uh, 
do something here. Now if I were to plug this, the 50 ohms, right, into here, into this bellum, then what resistance here should cause this to be one to one? Well it's a four to one bellum, right? Okay, so 50 ohms to 200 ohms. So I actually took 200 ohm resistors uh, 200 ohms isn't a standard value, but 100 is, and I soldered them together. Okay, brown, black, brown there. And what am I going to do? I'm going to put them in here and just uh, tighten them down. Okay, what I've done is I've connected this. This is 100 plus 100, so 200 ohms here to the 200 ohm. Uh, balanced output over here 50 ohms going in let's see what we see well if you look at the uh, meter we've got at 2 megahertz 2.4 megahertz 50 ohms okay 1.1 SWR because there's a little bit of reactants in there somewhere uh, not very much now let's see what this happens at other frequencies here is 5 still 50 Reactance has gone down, so we're uh, seeing a 1.0 to 1. Let's keep going up in frequency here. We're into the uh, 20 meter band. Look at that, 48 and 2. Notice it does change slightly with frequency as you go up, because you're picking up uh, some other effects. At 35, um, well, let's just go back down to the 10 meter band. Okay. Uh, 55, 4, 1.1, okay? So what we're seeing is that this ballon right here is giving us our 50 ohms if the load resistance is 200 ohms uh, without any reactants in it to speak of, we see 50 ohms right here. So uh, this is how you use them for connecting to antennas. Now in some ways this is the equivalent of a matching device at the antenna except we're going to put this down here near the transmitter so that our 200 ohm um, feed line will work here. Now note that feed line, uh, balanced feed line these days is available 300 ohms as twin lead which is hard to find anymore. Um, about uh, 450 ohms for what they call window line, sometimes called ladder line, and true ladder line is 600 ohms. So a 200 ohm ballon, you're not going to get one to one SWR here. So if you want uh, something different, you might look for another ballon uh, for that thing. Okay, now we're going to try that again. That's the current ballon. Let's take this out and put this on the voltage ballon. See, we've got the 200 ohms right there. We've got this going in over here. Get this all nicely tightened down. Okay. It's not real tight, is it? Okay. Now we got a little bit different case right here. Let's go down to... Uh, what we're seeing here is with this uh, uh, voltage type ballon that our resistance is a little bit frequency dependent and we've got a fair amount in here of reactants left over uh, so that gives us a 1.7 which is is acceptable let's go up to the top of uh, 75 meters 1.3 SWR uh, around the uh, 30 meter band there, 52 and 11, 1.2, that's pretty good. Okay, here we're seeing uh, the resistance actually seeming to go up as we go up in, uh, in frequency. So we're getting a little bit different behavior from this voltage ballon than the uh, current ballon. So, um, it's just what we've got. Not everything is, is equal. Like I said, I used this ballon for quite a long time with a, a big loop uh, that I had that I took down in favor of the, uh, of the vertical. So what we learned from these experiments is we actually do see a transformative power transforming the um, impedance here 
from the 200 to the 50. This little MFJ one does a little better job than this big one, but then this big one's a voltage balance. You're not, it's not going to behave the same way as the current ballon in here. Although, you know, for practical purposes, they are, are very much the same. That ends our demonstration. Let's go back to the charts. Now, let me show you a use case for a different kind of ballon called a choke ballon. Now, here's a typical dipole without a ballon, and I'm going to make the assertion that this is probably the most common antenna in the world. Okay, the center conductor of the coax goes to one leg, the shield goes to the other leg. Okay, now in most cases this will work just fine. However, the current coming out here has to equal the current coming out of here. But some of the current goes there, and the rest of the current which hopefully is not too very much, actually rides on the outside of the shield. This doesn't affect what's going on on the inside. And as we've mentioned before, in coax, all the energy is inside. There's none outside. So this shield out here is just waiting to pick something up. So you get a little bit of current coming down here. So the current here and the current here are not quite equal. And this can come down here to create mischief as uh, RFI. It will try to radiate off the uh, outside of the shield. The way to solve that, of course, is to put something here that provides uh, a high impedance. Now, what would provide a high impedance would be an inductance in series. Okay? An inductance in series uh, would cause this current to see a high impedance and therefore get all the current to flow over here. You can have a, a little bit of distance right in here. Now, to do this, we usually use what's called a choke ballon. There's no transformer in it at all. What we just want is some inductance right here. Uh, so one way to do it is to coil up a bunch of coax. This is the cobweb antenna from MFJ. And um, right there, you see that I've coiled up the coax. Now any current traveling down the outside of the line will travel through this and it will be influenced by the others. There's inductance there in the 12 turns I think that I've got on here. Now inside the coax that's totally independent. It does not see the added inductance. So this can stop currents from flowing on the outside by giving them a high impedance. There's nothing there that will dissipate energy. Uh, it just uh, doesn't let it go that way, so it goes out through the antenna. You can get a closer view of that right here, where you see I've put quite a bit together. Okay, that's about 25-something feet of coax right there. I chose to use uh, RG8X, and I do notice that that thing has to be flipped over because it got hung wrong. Uh, I had some help hanging it, and I greatly appreciate it. I, I'm, I don't go on roofs anymore. Here is another example of a choke ballon. This on the back of my recreational uh, Polaris Razor. So what we want, what that means is we're going to get current down through here. So we've got this little several turn choke ballon right here to reduce that, so that by the time it gets down to the uh, transmitter, the transmitter is just seeing 50 ohms. Uh, we don't use choke balance, uh, choke balance to change impedance. They're just there to stop shield currents on the outside of the shield. This is with a very nice uh, little portable uh, loop antenna that I just tested recently. And this right here, inside here, are a whole bunch of beads. Little ferrite beads. And so every time you get coax going through a ferrite bead, it's going to add a little inductance. Remember, just a single wire through is a one-turn coil. And so they just add a whole lot of these little uh, ferrite toroid beads. And this acts also as a choke ballon. We're not doing any impedance matching or changing here at all. Types of balance, we've covered about everything. Are they worth it? They're worth it if you need it. If you've, uh, if, if you've got RFI in the shack uh, and a balance solves the problem, then by golly, you need one. I mean, otherwise you don't. Uh, just check 
uh, where do you get one? Well, they're available from MFJ. They're available from quite a number of independent producers. Each one will tell you that their ballon is better. Okay, uh, they do about the same thing. Um, and can you make them? If you have a toroid core, absolutely you can. Uh, you can wind them uh, with uh, some good sturdy wire, whatever you had. I mean, the the uh, the toroid in this one right here is just simply huge. So if you have a toroid like that, you can try to uh, wind your own, just like that voltage balance schematic I showed you earlier. So there you have it. Please use both feet when walking. Take a look at the tip jar. Take a look at uh, whatever you'd like. I hope you uh, stay online and watch a few more of my videos. And until next time, 73.